in this example, we're going to take a look at finding a minimum cost given a quadratic equation. So uh, we've done a problem like this where we've tried to maximize something. In this case, we're going to try to minimize something. Both are going to involve uh, not only setting up a window, but then using either the min or max features on our calculator to find the coordinates of a vertex. So I've gone ahead and typed in my equation already over here. I've replaced uh, P with X. Uh, this is going to give me the cost in thousands of dollars for producing um, some number of iPhones out there. So if you uh, just try to graph this in your standard 10 by 10 window, you are not going to see anything because that window stinks. And so our first step, if we're going to use our calculator at least, is to find an appropriate viewing window. So uh, go ahead and press window. And you can see down here the values I ended up using to get a picture of the graph. But let's say I didn't know what those were off the top of my head. I got to use a little bit of common sense, some logic to help me figure out the size of this window. So I always ask myself, what does the uh, input value, what does the output value stand for? So in this case, P is standing for the number of iPhones I produce or Apple produces. So uh, as your minimum input value, we could choose to make zero iPhones. Typically zero is gonna be your min for these problems. For your maximum number of iPhones I make, I don't really know. Uh, maybe I'm gonna start with 100. Okay, and you can see that that's not where we're going to end up, but I'm going to start with 100 just to see what happens. Um, don't change the scale number, so let's go down to the Y, min and Y max. And so the output value this time represents the cost, and that's in thousands of dollars. So uh, the minimum cost, again, would be zero if we didn't spend any money to make those. That'd be great. Uh, your maximum cost, again, I don't really know. I'm going to start at, let's say, 100000 Dollars. So remember, a hundred would represent one hundred thousand dollars. So anyway, just like I don't know, those are total guesses. But I just want to show you what's going to happen. I would see. Okay, I'm actually seeing a graph this time, but again, it's not very good. Uh, I know this is supposed to be a parabola, an upwards opening parabola, since A is positive, uh, and I don't see that at all. So it looks like I need to make my X max way bigger and my Y uh, max bigger as well. So let's go back to window. Um, the reason I want to do it this way is just to show you it's okay to make mistakes. It's a guessing game. Uh, maybe I'm going to make a 1,000 iPhone, so let's way up that X value number. And then for your Y max, I want to go higher as well. It looks like uh, I landed at 200, so fine, let's go 200. Okay. Maybe you don't get it on your first try, maybe you don't get it on your second try. The point is you keep adjusting your window till you see something that works for you. So that window is going to be way better. I can see the parabola sort of dip down and then uh, that price continues to skyrocket over there. So um, there's my appropriate win viewing window. I've, I've made a sketch of it over here. Uh, let's go ahead and then answer these next questions now that my graph is made. So first up they want to know what's the cost of producing 300 new iPhones. Uh, I can see that these values don't make sense, but whatever, we're going to go with it. Um, so one way I could do this is to hit trace, and then I could try to move my cursor to get to when x is 300, but I probably won't get there exactly. The cool thing is once you hit trace, go ahead and just type in the x value you want. We want to make 300 phones, so when I hit enter, it'll automatically jump me to that price. So uh, $78.5,000. Maybe we should have done this problem without the thousands, but whatever, we're doing the problem anyway. So there's, um, there's my y value for the given x. Uh, and then my next question, my last question, was find the uh, cost or find the number of phones that will minimize the cost. So again, they're looking for a minimum or sometimes a max. In this case, a minimum. Either way, they want to find a vertex. So we want to find the coordinates of that vertex. So to do this, hit second and trace. And this time we want to select minimum, so option three, okay? They're going to say go to the left of that value, so keep hitting your left key until your cursor is somewhere to the left of that vertex. You don't want to get too close to it. So over there, I can see it's a, a little bit up swinging back there. So let's go ahead and say that's my left bound, so I'll hit enter. Then they say move to the right, so let's go move somewhere over here, clearly to the right of the vertex. That should be fine. Since my vertex is down here, I'm to the left of it, or now to the right of it. So press enter, and then for guess, just hit enter a third time. Uh, and it will find you, uh, your min and max value. Sometimes you may need to round some things off. So let's interpret what that coordinate means and make sure we answer the question down here. So they say find the minimum number of iPhones that will min or find the number of iPhones that will minimize cost. That is the P value. So, or in this case, my X value. So it looks like 100 iPhones would be the magic number of iPhones to produce. And the minimum cost, the Y value then, is that 6 point, or 60.5. So that's how I'll find my window, that's how I'll find my vertex, and then interpret it to answer that question.